All right, today we're talking about breakoff strategy in hardpoint, specifically on Mercado. And we're gonna be looking at the bad side, the good side, positions, goals, objectives on both sides, and really breaking it down for you guys. So let's get right into it. Okay, so let's first talk about the bad side goals, objectives, and positionings. Uh, when we're talking about bad side, we're mainly talking about this P3 spawn. Obviously, uh, you don't wanna be spawning on this side to start with uh, because it is better to start off with this P2 spawns because P2 is the next hill. And you're gonna wanna be keeping those spawns uh, during the P1 so you can have a good P2. So the whole objective of P3 basically is to flip for that P2. You probably already know this, but we're gonna be talking about what you would actually do to flip the spawns and how you can actually help benefit your team uh, while you're starting on this bad side. So let's talk about the positioning for our players in this specific VOD. So I kind of cut this down uh, just to the break off, made it frame by frame so it's easier for you guys. But in this break off, this is versus LAT. We're gonna be doing a 2-2 two -two split. So we're gonna have two guys go CT and we're gonna have our two subs uh, hit this mid alley. And what they're actually doing before this is throwing uh, double nades towards the point. So this is a really common thing towards the end of the game where teams would try and uh, basically nade uh, the point from around this position here. And they would throw these nades and try and hit it so that it hits uh, at the beginning of this point or inside the tunnel so that it can try and basically stunt anyone uh, from the opposing team that's trying to get into that P1 pretty quickly. So it was a really good tactic uh, for that bad side to coordinate these double nades. And that's what we're trying to do here. So let's talk about what the positioning is like while we're going into this. So as you can see here, it's a really poor start for us. We get two piece, uh, I believe by Octane here playing L. So this is a common way to stunt this initial uh, double push through the mid alley where you just instantly go towards L and look for this gunfight right away. So obviously this is something we probably should have uh, countered with like a stun or something, but we wanted to have that timing uh, to get the kills on the hill in case we did weaken those guys with the double nade. So uh, that was our thinking process going into that. Uh, unfortunately, we do get two piece, but it's not over just yet. So uh, what I really wanna talk about here is these guys CT. So uh, these two guys CT, are really important because in our opinion, uh, CT was the main way that you wanted to break into this P1 to start trying to flip out for that P2. So if you were able to get uh, this sort of control, it was really easy for you to start getting angles onto the hill. So whether it's uh, killing guys on the hill or killing guys uh, over here that might be playing in this corner or killing anyone that might be playing this corner or in dark or even just playing back here uh, banana. If you were able to get these kills, you could start putting the pressure towards this side of the map. Uh, and while they might be spawning uh, close, like in P2 here or back alley, uh, you would have that positioning to keep this time white. What you wanted to really do was make sure that the time was white, that they weren't soaking that P1 to have a good start to the game and then chain it with the P2. What you wanted to do was keep it white and what you would do is maintain that pressure so that you can start spawning them out. If you were able to keep that hill white, it was a really good opportunity for you uh, to actually get a weird spawn where you would be spawning P2 instead because uh, most of the time, whoever was controlling that hill would control uh, this P2 spawn. So a lot of times teams would just want to try and get kills towards this P1, make it white, and regardless of what their pressure was like, uh, just make it sort of mixy so that it was a possible that with the kill timings, you would be the one flipping out and spawning here, and your opponents would be the one spawning in P3 tins. So uh, that was the main goal for us on the bad side. If we want to talk a little bit about why we chose going CT rather than going towards this P7 area, uh, it's mainly because of the angles that you would get on hill. So obviously, with these angles, you're able to kill this guy that might be soaking here, and this guy uh, that might be playing close on time doesn't really have too much cover, plus he can die to anyone that's mid-alley. If you're breaking off towards the skate side or P7 and trying to get control over here, it's just really easy for the team that's holding on time to just sit in these corners over here and over here and make you uh, try to overextend to get these kills, and at that point, it's just it's a really hard gunfight for you, and you're not really doing anything to actually get them off time because they're just going to be sitting in these corners. So uh, this is why we chose uh, the CT side. And for us, it was just better angles, easier kills. If you can teamwork this guy 1v2 over here, it just makes it really chaotic for the opposing team. Uh, because now instead of having this guy banana that's 
holding this lane for you guys, you're spawning back alley and you need to now reinforce the hill or reinforce the side. And this whole CT side for you now just becomes completely compromised and gets into the control of the enemy team. So let's play this out real quick. As you see here, both of our players die, but we do get this CT control and we have complete angles. We get this kill on number one octane and we also get another kill on number four with the angles that we're able to get from the CT side. So already, even though we got two piece off the break, our guys are now spawning back up. We now have a basically a 4v1 on hill because the last guy is still maintaining this right side pressure. You know, even though a lot of teams didn't hit this gator P7 side right at the bat, you still as a whole team had to contest it, whether it be from the Jeep or whether it be from back alley here, because you don't want to have them get that free access to your back alley like that. You at least want to contest it, maybe die and just get that info for your team and then spawn up yourself back here. So let's say you don't contest it and you're just playing, you know, back over here with the rest of your guys on hill and uh, banana. It's really hard for you to wrap back and let's say get these kills on maybe one or two guys that are sneaking through and starting to create some chaos on your back line. But to keep it going, we have that four on one in hill. He does get one kill, but do we do get the trades? And look what's happening now. They're spawning back alley. They're towards gate here. Uh, they're MP2. So now they're kind of like on this back foot. Look, we're starting to soak time near and now we have full control over the CT, you know, L side of the map. And it's just a really more beneficial position for us because if we get like let's say one more kill on this number two guy here you know we're now soaking hill and starting to hold it from this side and that's you know really key because if you can start soaking time on that bad side you can now get um, as many breaking opportunities into that p2 as possible so you know, you're soaking the time. You're probably gonna get one or two tries at least before P2 even pops to start putting even more pressure. You know, they're still spawning in the back here or maybe they even start spawning behind you and then you have free reign to start pushing back up into P2 and, and holding that good side for yourself. So we'll keep playing it out here. As you see here, we start maintaining more pressure. Five is even gonna go for those kills. We start getting kills towards P2. Number two is left alone on hill. And look at this, we're already blocking this P2 spawn and they're gonna be spawning out tin here. So we're still maintaining this pressure because we got that side. And look at this, they're gonna start trying to play towards this P2 side because they realize their teammate is spawning out. So they do get these split spawns because now they have a little bit more influence towards this P2. We're starting to spawn out bricks here and now it's just, it's really really mixy for LAT. Number six here makes a really good play because once he sees that number eight spawn here, Bricks, he knows for a 100% fact that one of LAT's guys has spawned out 10 and he can play for this spawner. And look what he does here. He goes to L, play for the spawner. We get the free kill. And now we still have white time here. They're spawning in the back while we are pressuring from all sides now, which is gonna make them spawn 10 behind us. They spawn 10 behind us, we spawn Bricks. Now we have a basically a 3v2 onto this new hill and we're still pressuring out. Even number five here is gonna play the same way number six did. He knows that number seven spawned out bricks. So he knows that LAT spawned out uh, tin once again. He's gonna play for that spawner, take some shots. So number three has to redirect his route. Number two actually makes a good, really good play by getting uh, two kills on the new hill. But again, we're still pressuring this and making this mixy. And even though it's not a perfect P2 rotation for us, we did make that P1 really mixy and had that chance to start flipping P2. If we got maybe one or two more kills, it would have been our spawn and RP2 hold. Okay, moving on to another VOD. We're doing a one, two, one now. Kind of a similar idea uh, in the middle, uh, but we're actually gonna get teamwork by number six and number seven here. This is a nice angle by number six to kind of have a little off angle for anyone mid alley rather than you know going out like we saw in the last VOD. And obviously number seven here waiting for the nades again, so he's not going right onto time. Time is white for the time being. And as you see here, number one is gonna have a really big gun fight on CT. Like we said before, if we have CT, we have those angles. So uh, let's play this out here. So number four and number seven have a gunfight. Number four is actually gonna kill seven, probably because he was already weak to the nade. Uh, but number six is gonna get this trade on him. But fortunately for us, number one here is gonna get this kill on number eight. So we still have the CT side. And as you can see here, number three has a little delayed push, so he can kind of get this trade on number six, but also number one is there for that trade too. So they're kind of working this guy together. They get the kill and look at the positioning that we have now. You know, we're on bad side, but we're already having this contestion onto the time. We're already starting to soak time. Um, because we're on time, there's a chance that we even spawn P2 ourselves instead of the other team. We have CT, we have gate because we sent a lurk over there. And because it's three down, 
we know the last guy is probably uh, most likely towards this P7 area, and that's exactly where he is. So from this information, we know if we spawn P2 that they're gonna be spawning tin out here, and the last guy alive is going to be towards this P7 area. So let's play this out. So as you see, number four does get the spawn. We spawn them out tin. We know last guy alive is truck. Number two is gonna start playing for that. Unfortunately, we die on hill and we start getting traded. And look on the other side, they're gonna be trying to do the same thing to kind of re-break onto us. They're trying to get this CT positioning uh, and force us uh, to not be able to get on hill but what happens is we start spawning up and it's a huge kill for number one here on number eight because with this kill that means number three here is going to be able to swoop up take this positioning back banana and now kind of retake and repressure the ct area so that they don't have any free angles for us on hill and from this you know this is just a perfect situation for us once we get this kill because now we can start to cover every lane once again so like you see here number three and number two team working this number six guy they get a kill there number four is just playing his timings to the right side we don't want to give that right side up for free so you know he's not going to get any kills he's probably not even going to see anyone but his job is just to maintain that side just in case anyone does take that route there uh, and we just maintain the rest of these lanes ct mid alley we're looking at dark too and basically taking the timings gate in the right side here so we're maintaining all the lanes now we can play safe for the p2 now this will be the last bad side breakup that I show you guys, but it's a really good example again of the CT side control. So again, we're going with that same 2-2 split with the two ARs going CT, two subs going mid alley. Uh, we throw our nades, but they probably miss because number eight is able to get onto hill and get into this close corner. But look what happens here. Number one and number three, both teamwork this guy banana, get that kill, huge kill. And even though both of our guys here mid alley die, both of our subs, we still have a decent situation and look how we salvage this. So even though we both died mid alley here, we're gonna start spawning in this tin area and we have the CT control. So again, we have the angles on the hill to kill these guys on the hill, trying to make it at least white time. And what happens here? We don't even get the kill on time. Number one loses the gunfight and look what happens here. Because number three stayed alive and because number two is gonna be spawning up and number four is gonna try and take a route to kill number six, look what happens here. Number three gets the trade on number eight, good positioning for us. Now they have one guy spawning back P2 and now we're gonna have another trade on the guy in the hill. So look, number two spawned out. He was one of the first guys who died, but now he can teamwork number five in the corner here with number three. They get that kill. We now have hill control technically, but what number two is gonna do here is take this opportunity to start getting ahead and getting into that P2. You know, once you get those two, maybe even three downs, you wanna start working towards the other side and start to break these spawns for the opponent team. So he takes this timing, tries to get into this P2. Meanwhile, we're still spawning in 10. And again, this is why we didn't want to have uh, these right side break offs because of what happens here. Number two is pressuring this spawn here. That causes number five to spawn out because we're already spawning tin. And now they don't have any angles to kill our players on the hill or any players that might be pressuring CT side. Look at these angles. They can't do anything here. So now we're pressuring towards this P2. We're pressuring CT. And look what happens here. We start catching them off guard. Number eight jumps out the window. Number two kills him. And now we're in a prime position to really put the pressure on with number five and number six trying to wrap back to help their team and keep these spawns for them. So I kind of touched on this before, but let's look at what you want to do on the good side when you're trying to just maintain the control and, and holding this for that next P2. So what we're doing here is first playing this really ratty corner. You know, this works a lot of the times in rank play. So if you are still playing rank play, definitely use this spot because it's a really good off angle for anyone that might be coming mid alley or anyone that might be challenging through dark, you can still turn and get a pretty good off angle on them. Really the only way to counter this is something we did versus Toronto when we knew that we were playing them was going through gate really quickly and then using this angle over here uh, to kill the guy through the corner. So that's how you would counter that specific position. But this is what we used because it was such a good off angle and uh, it was a really low chance for them to actually go towards gate. And the rest of the guys, one guy on time, uh, one guy playing this P7 area through the back alley and one guy playing and holding banana for the CT area pressure. Uh, so you might ask, why would you even send someone towards that right side? Because, you know, we're talking about CT control. Why would you even send them here? Again, like I talked about before, you at least just want to contest it because in case number two does take this route, which he's doing right here, if he's not contested, he can just get this free reign into that P2 and, and start taking that route and making it really chaotic, start blocking the spawns and making everything mixy. But I really want to talk about just the main goal of this, where you're just maintaining all of those lanes, playing a little bit safe, and just making sure that you have everything covered. So look at what LET does here. They're going to teamwork Dan over towards that banana side. Dan gets one, but he does end up getting traded by number four here 
here. So we do lose that initial pressure, but because of how we're playing on Hill, we're still able to salvage this situation. Look at what happens here. Number six is playing that off angle, gets the kill on number three. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, again, Brandon gets this kill on number two. So we still have everything controlled. We know last guy alive is CT based on the information that Dan is giving us. And now we can just play for that. So look at what six dubs here. He actually does lose that gunfight, but number seven has over him. And number five is already spawned back up and he can now reinforce uh, that banana lane once again. So number seven does get the kill, gets the trade. And once again, we're back to that initial positioning where we have this banana control and can start contesting CT once again. So unfortunately for Dan, number one does spawn back up and goes right back uh, towards this Lamar spot and kills him banana. But the real big thing here is how we're playing these trades. You know, number seven is still able to get that trade. So even though number one killed Dan, you know, he got shots off on number one. So he's able to make him weak and we can just play trades off of it. And number seven, even though he dies on here, he gets number two weak and number six can get that kill. So we're still maintaining these trades, maintaining that one up positioning and maintaining the control over the entire map. So the last clip I'll show you here is again, showing how important it is to just play safe and maintain this control. You know, you don't wanna be risking your life when you don't have to, especially on this P2 side, uh, when you want those spawns for the next hill. So once again, this is, I believe Atlanta and they're gonna be sending two guys towards CT, similar to what we've been talking about before, and one guy dark and one guy mid alley. So basically a standard break, you know, a lot of times you're gonna be having the double CT because of what these teams are looking for towards their goals of getting that CT control. And on the other side here, we're gonna take this free hill control. We still again have to contest this right side just in case they did play this right side. And once again, we have Dan go see banana here. He's gonna play a little bit safer this time because he does see that it is 1v2. So uh, you'll see how this plays out here. Dan does see not only one, but two guys challenging him. So he backs off here. So he's not even gonna contest it. He knows that they have to at least pressure this and he can take another angle. Uh, they can try and help these guys P1 out. And that's exactly what he does. He gets this kill on number six uh, so that they don't have to worry about uh, a second guy on the hill. But seven is gonna kill number four on hill and number two can try and get on this trade. But unfortunately, number seven is able to escape to L, play his life. Really good play by number seven. They have CT control, they have L control. So this is really important for us to just stay alive here. We do not wanna be spawning out in this situation. And that's what happens here. You know, it's white time, but we do have this influence towards this P2 side. So number four is gonna spawn right back up inside P2. Number two is actually gonna get this kill on number seven on him trying to reach out. So unfortunately for him, you know, he does make that good play of staying alive, but he does reach out thinking that he has the help from number five. Unfortunately, he doesn't. Uh, because five isn't there yet. He, he doesn't have that angle on number two. So number two gets a free kill on Hill and we're still playing safe on this area of the map. So number four is gonna fill this lane back up. He's gonna be holding dark now. He doesn't wanna be going all the way to CT because he knows that two people are alive there and he can just easily be traded out. This gives him a little bit of a safer positioning so they can back up towards this hedge or towards the court in case they start pressuring him with more guys. And number one is actually choosing to help out number two on Hill in case uh, the enemy team was gonna start trying to hit out through the medallion and getting that trade on the week number two because he just killed number seven. Uh, so he's gonna try and just reinforce the hill that way and just banking on number four staying alive. So this is what's gonna happen here. Number four sees this guy dark, but he's actually not gonna challenge because he realizes that if he does get weakened, he's just gonna get teamwork by these guys CT. So he backs off, tries to get a different angle on anyone that might be pushing banana. And that's exactly what he does. He goes around this hedge and then gets a kill on the guy banana. And that's the biggest kill of the entire rotation probably because now uh, we don't have any threats onto our spawn. If we do die, we're gonna spawn right back up in P2. And now we can once again reinforce Banana and get this CT control back. So to rewind it real quick, number one was actually able to get a kill on this guy, number eight, Lamar spot. Uh, he was actually reinforcing the hill, but with an AR, so he's actually able to chow this Lamar spot and get a kill on another guy that was pressuring CT area. We're just covering everything now. We get this kill on number eight, who was again pressuring that Lamar spot and everything is solid. We're spawning back up P2. This is pretty much the perfect way that you wanna to end towards this P1. So thank you guys for making it to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this whole breakdown of the breakoffs on Mercado and the strategy behind it and what players and teams are thinking while they're going into the game. And you know, this was a really long video, but it was just on the beginning of the map. And you just see how in depth everything can be at the highest level of Pro Cod. And it really just puts everything into perspective on how players and teams are thinking while they're in the game and outside of the game brainstorming uh, before a match. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.